As a city councilman, Andrew Graham was well aware of the many benefits Council Bluffs had to offer, but it was the park system that held the potential to really make the city something special. During his over four decades on the park board, many parks were added, but it was Fairmount Park that was Mr. Graham's favorite. But that crown jewel of the Council Bluffs park system was actually born out of failure. The wooded steep hills that would become much of Fairmount Park had been platted into housing lots as William's second edition and a portion of Green's edition. Many of the lots had been sold to non-residents who had never seen what they had bought, unaware of its rough topography. The planned developments never took place and the city acquired ownership of many lots due to delinquent taxes. Andrew Graham took over the city's lethargic park department with an aggressive plan of developing the Council Bluffs park system into the envy of the country. He saw the value of this property and prodded the city into acquiring title to all of the land through tax sales and condemnation in October 1879. General Dodge added to the property by donating some of his own adjacent land. Brush was removed, trees were planted, and scenic trails created. As improvements were added, the Board of Park Commissioners began to get complaints that Fairmount Park was hard to get to. The city agreed to cut a path through a hill so streetcar service via a dead-end route from Madison Avenue could bring visitors to the park. The new line opened October 1, 1897, looping a newly constructed pavilion before returning to Graham Avenue via that dramatic cut through the bank. A wooden bridge was built as part of a scenic drive over the cut in 1893, supported by pilings driven into the banks. The steep embankment had a tendency to collapse and close the line. One candidate for park commissioner made improvement of the streetcar cut his campaign promise. The park has never been a static entity, changing over time with the desires of the city's leadership and economic conditions. Animal cages were relocated from the front entrance to the valley near the Swan Pond in a beautification move. An entrance was created at the head of 9th Avenue, with clay tennis courts adjacent to a winding road that climbed to Lookout Point. A kiddie pool was popular in the 1930s. Funding from the Kiwanis Club allowed the remodeling of a building from an old tourist camp into an enclosed picnic shelter with a walkout lower level. The park board boasted the shelter contained every needed convenience and made it possible to use the park when the weather was bad. A greenhouse was added, as well as a building that served as park's department headquarters. The road through the park was paved in 1953. In 1974, a carillion was erected near the top of Mount Graham in remembrance of Jean and Inez Brigant. The couple had left their estate to the city and suggested this as a good use for the money. The device was silenced due to complaints of noise in 1975, then returned to service following a petition drive. It was damaged in an attempted theft in which the would-be thieves broke in, loaded the mechanism in their truck, but failed to unplug it. The device flew out of the truck when they took off. The bungling burglars were apprehended a short time later. Eventually, parts were no longer available, so it was silenced for good. Not every distinctive feature was planned by the park board. The unmistakable twin towers of coil radio between 1925 and 1936 at the top of Huntington Avenue led to what had officially been Dodge Lookout atop Mount Graham, becoming Coil Point in the local lexicon, a name heard yet today. Not all plans materialized. The purchase of two burrows from the Rocky Mountains that visitors could ride to the top of the bluffs never came about. The Park Commission's 1904 proposal to erect a statue of General Dodge on horseback never made it past the drawing board. Nor did a plan to make the park the site of the Western Historic Trail Center, which was later built by the river instead. Hiking through the park and stumbling across old foundations and other reminders of grand things that once were makes one wonder why it changed. Much of that can be attributed to progress and altered tastes. As air conditioning became commonplace in homes, the motivation to go to the park to seek a cool breeze went away. Radio, movies, and later television provided competing forms of entertainment. Better transportation made it easy to get to Omaha's larger zoo an arsonist took out the Kiwanis picnic shelter. But new life is coming to the park. To keep up with the growing population and ensure the park provides the most entertainment for everyone, the City of Council Bluffs has been working with the Iowa State University's College of Design 
and the National Park Service to develop improvements for Fairmount Park. An interactive water playground was recently added, and the park is currently being reimagined at multiple levels. Although the metropolitan area has grown beyond what early park planners could have possibly imagined, and automobiles have effortlessly eliminated the necessity of burrows for sightseers, not wanting to hike the steep bluffs to take in the views, some things remain the same. A visitor can still experience nature just moments from the city, and perhaps that's more important than ever today. As an early park report noted, without the beauty of form and color of trees, of flowers and green fields, of sky and clouds and water, what a dreary place the world would be. History is never truly lost until it's forgotten. And preserving that history is our mission. The Historical Society of Pottawatomie County in Council Bluffs, Iowa.